When we're confronted with the disease, many of us are still hoping, and many scientists are still hoping for that magic bullet, special medicine that's going to change it from a disease that's usually fatal to one that can be cured or managed. And uh, as was alluded to this morning, the latest big thing in cancer research is immunotherapy, and that's harnessing your own body's immune system to fight the cancer. And we're very lucky today. We have Dr. Marcus Butler. He's a research scientist here at the Princess Margaret Cancer Center. He recently came to us from the world-renowned Dana-Farber Cancer Center in Boston, and this is the work that he's been doing. Dr. Butler. Thanks very <clears throat> much for the uh, invitation to speak to you today. The first slide is a slide which describes or shows all of the, a sort of timeline of what people have been thinking about over the years in terms of immune-based therapies. And as was uh, mentioned, there has been a lot of recent excitement about immune therapy because there are some clinical uh, results in uh, some cancers showing uh, significant promise, but uh, gives you the impression that this is an idea that had just initially just come up in the last couple of years, but the reality is that uh, immune-based therapies of cancer were, uh, were initially imagined to be important right at the very beginning of modern science in the late 19th century, when uh, scientists started looking at uh, tumors under the microscope, it was recognized that the tumors didn't just well, they, they were just at that point learning what cells were, but they could see that there were different kinds of cells within tumors. And uh, there was very, at the very beginning, was the idea that there might be cells that are able to traffic through the body and attack a cancer to prevent cancers from, uh, from developing. So the uh, idea behind immune-based therapies is that you're using your own body's normal immune cells to be, to be able to recognize and target cancer cells. Uh, this may make a lot of sense intuitively, but one of the challenges that uh, has really plagued the whole field of immune therapy over the century uh, is that uh, you could you could show mouse models where you could where you could use the immune system of the mouse to cure lots of tumors, but it never really happened in large numbers in patients. Occasionally, you would hear uh, there would be studies with vaccines or with uh, high dose cytokines, uh, immune based uh, treatments, which which were able to help a few patients, but they were very rare occurrences. It certainly did it. The, the basic science work in the, in the lab and these few cases in patients really did help uh, a, a certain subset of scientists to continue the field of immune therapy of cancer. But it really took the for later developments in, the, in uh, the 1980s and 90s where we started to really understand very important aspects of the immune system. Tumors are not just cancer cells, and I think the pancreatic cancer uh, world is, is well aware of this because if you start to read the literature about pancreatic cancer, and I'm not a pancreatic cancer specialist, I've seen patients in my training, but I treat melanoma and gynecologic cancers, but one of the really hallmarks of pancreatic cancers that we all know about is that uh, the, actually the pancreatic tumor mass is not mostly tumor, but actually a lot of supportive cells. There are a lot of these cells called fibroblasts, which are uh, uh, structural cells that some immunologists think is actually a barrier to fend off the immune system from attacking the tumor. Uh, and there are also within the tumor uh, important cells that help to feed the tumor through uh, blood vessels, but also there are other sorts of immune cells 
that on the one hand in certain models may actually help the tumor to grow, such as uh, myeloid, uh, some f fancy names, they're suppressor type cells, but they're also uh, present within uh, many tumors and in some cases some pancreatic cancers where you can identify T cells that may have an anti-tumor effect. And uh, as we've learned uh, from the science in the, the, the last uh, 20, 30 years, as we're understanding Im Im immunology, basic immunology, the immune response is a balance of both uh, pro and anti-inflammatory responses. So even if you have a tumor that is, uh, obviously if it's growing in a patient, then the immune system has not been able to constrain that tumor if you think that there is a real immune response against the tumor. So why, why might that happen? Well, one of the things that happens in our normal immune response is that when we develop an infection or get the flu or whatever, we have this big antiviral effect. But then there are also elements within the immune system that turn that down to suppress the immune response so that the immune response doesn't cause uh, us to get really, really sick from a overactive immune response. And as you may know, there are certain uh, kinds of diseases that patients can get uh, called autoimmune diseases where their immune system is attacking their body. So when we think about immune therapy uh, and, the, and what's happening within the tumor, it, we have to think of a way that the anti-cancer effects of the immune system can fight the tumor and balance that out against the suppressive effects, which tumor cells are essentially hijacking the body's own natural balance mechanisms of pro and anti-inflammatory responses. So within tumors, uh, there are anti-cancer effects that are caused by lymphocytes that are cancer-fighting type cells. There are also cells that help to jumpstart the immune system called dendritic cells. And there are various cytokines that are important in an anti-cancer or, an, or, an, uh, or an inflammatory effect. And these different elements are balanced against suppressive elements like lymphocytes that are suppressive lymphocytes, uh, suppressive macrophages, and other types of chemicals that immune cells will uh, secrete that help to downregulate the immune response. And then there are also various molecules that are present on immune cells that have either a pro or an anti-cancer or inflammatory effect. Now, uh, for while there were a subset of, of scientists over the years that really believed that immune therapy would be important, there were a lot of naysayers who thought that, well, this really isn't imp going to turn out to be important for patients. Uh, one of the things that really helped to sway the tide is the development of therapies called, with what are called tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. And uh, this sort of therapy is where anti-cancer uh, T cells are uh, generated and then infused into patients. So in this uh, particular cartoon, it this is kind of a complex uh, cartoon that I'd like to take you through a little bit so you can understand what is going on in immune responses against cancer. First of all, cancer cells have certain aspects that are uh, expressed that are what we call in immunology, they're called antigens. And these certain aspects are unique to the tumor. They may be there because of mutations that occur within the tumor, or they may be there because the tumor has become dysregulated and is expressing abnormal proteins. These uh, aspects or antigens are taken up by dendritic cells, which are kind of the umpire of the immune system. They are responsible, or not the umpire, they're the quarterback. They really help things to, uh, to really jumpstart and happen with the immune system. The dendritic cells will take these antigens to the lymph node uh, and then present these antigens to the immune system and, and jumpstart an immune response. And then these T cells, which are cancer-fighting T cells, are able to traffic and target the tumor. And what has been really remarkable in some of the uh, studies with uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes is that if you grow up these T cells in the laboratory and then infuse them into patients, you can uh, induce incredible responses. So tumors 
can be excised, the T cells are grown up to large numbers and then infused into patients. And you can see in this case of a patient with melanoma where a big nasty tumor was treated with, a, with adoptive T cell therapy and can induce an, in, an, an important uh, response. At the Princess Margaret, we've started a similar kind of program for melanoma, and we're also studying cancers such as mesothelioma and, uh, and in ovarian cancer, and hopefully this therapy can be extended to other types of treatments. In terms of uh, what you're reading about in the uh, literature in terms of drugs that are showing promise in patients with cancer, there is a type of, of agent called immune checkpoint inhibitors that's shown some important responses. And the immune checkpoint inhibitor is a type of, of treatment which is involved in uh, blocking some of the breaks of the immune system. When you have an immune response against a, one of those aspects, the, the antigen, uh, that might be expressed on a tumor cell or, in, or on a dendritic cell. There are different kinds of interactions with the target cell which result in stimulatory uh, uh, responses, so a go response. But there are several other uh, responses which are inhibitory that constrain that response. So what's happened in the, uh, the last decade is that uh, antibodies are being developed by pharmaceutical uh, companies that block these interactions and will then result in, a, uh, in an anti-cancer effect. So uh, the first such drug that has been approved in Canada and the U.S. for, for melanoma is a drug called ipilimumab, which blocks anti-CTLA-4. In this cartoon, it looks like uh, it suggests that most of the action of CTLA-4 is in the lymph node, and there are some other details that make the exact mechanism unclear, but it does result in an enhanced immune response. Within the tumor, there are, there's another signal called the PD-1, PD-L1 interaction, which helps to constrain T cells as they try to target the tumor. So, uh, by blocking the PD-1 interaction, that results in an anti-cancer effect. And uh, the reason why we get excited about these drugs is that they may be able to really induce long-term responses in patients with cancer. The ipilimumab drug, which is approved for melanoma, may not have ended up uh, having approval. It was very close because it has a very low response rate. Uh, for melanoma, the most patients who have stage four disease have a, uh, without treatment have a very poor sur long-term survival, and the average time to death is less than a year. But in this clinical trial where patients received either a vaccine treatment or a treatment that included ipilimumab, the ones that received ipilimumab lived longer. Now, even though the response rate was very low, it was only about 10, 15 percent, those patients who did benefit really benefited very significantly. And it turns out that the overall response or the survival for uh, patients with melanoma is more like 20 percent instead of 10 percent because of the development of this drug. So I think when you're thinking about a disease like pancreatic cancer that has a poor, uh, stage four pancreatic cancer that has a poor survival benefit, you, uh, many times drugs are being developed which have, maybe it's a, it's a low response rate for that drug, but uh, it might turn out that, especially with immune-based therapies, that just because it's a small response rate, if those responses can be durable and long-lasting, then it really might be worth going on to those studies. So now, as part of standard of care for melanoma patients, we, you know, we sit down and we tell them this is what our chances are with this drug. And, uh, and everybody, of course, wants to be in this group rather than the patients who, who pass away early. 
it was a surprising at first that everybody would want to go through the, the treatment because it does sometimes have bad side effects, but it turns out that it's been very important for uh, helping many patients live a long time, and then we're also developing other treatments that can have uh, impact, such as the uh, drugs like um, uh, the PD-1 antibodies that have, again, again another 20, 30 percent of patients are responding. One of the other interesting things that's really a challenge for patients on immune therapy uh, drugs is that sometimes you can see uh, with these new kinds of cancer agents, uh, the, the tumors get worse before they get better. So the reason I included this slide here is that yeah, it, uh, for the drugs like nivolumab, or the, uh, which is an anti-PD-1 antibody, or pembrolizumab, an anti-PD-1 antibody, or ipilimumab, so they're all these fan fancy names, the anti-CTLA-4 antibody, these are new immune therapy drugs. One of the challenges is that you can give the patient the treatment, and then you're, you see them, and the disease seems to be getting bigger. Here's an example of a cutaneous lesion or of a liver lesion that's getting better. But the patients say, you know, I know it looks bad, but I actually feel better. And uh, then uh, later on, you can see an anti-cancer effect. This is probably occurs in about, uh, in melanoma, in about 4 or 5% of the patients we treat. But what that has uh, resulted in is that patients on clinical trials are uh, sometimes kept on, to the st on the trial for a little bit longer than you would expect uh, when even in the face of progression because the immune therapy drugs sometimes uh, require time to develop an anti-cancer treatment. There is a little bit of data with the PD-1 antibodies in pancreatic cancer. This is an anti-PD-1, PD-L1 drug uh, made by Metamune. And the, in the early phase one data that was recently uh, presented, there's a small percentage of patients who had shrinkage of their cancer uh, with this treatment. And it did take many weeks before you really saw a significant uh, decrease in some of these patients. So here's a patient where the disease was about the same, and then it shrunk at uh, the 18-week mark. This is discouraging in terms of the percentage of, of, of patients that have shrinkage in a phase one trial, but uh, I think it's also encouraging that we are seeing uh, activity in pancreatic cancer, and the question is whether these agents will be able to be developed further for patients. In terms of these immune checkpoint uh, activators or inhibitors, there are many different kinds of targets that the, um, that the immunologists have identified, and now the question is how do we figure out which of these types of targets we should study in clinical trials, and how do we match uh, the patients to uh, those um, uh, different therapies. Uh, again, this is the cartoon that describes the immune system. The challenges that we have in pancreatic cancer uh, that there's a little bit, I think, among the, the immunologists that are studying pancreatic cancer are having a little bit of a debate whether the problem with pancreatic cancer is that there just isn't uh, a big immune response against the cancer, and therefore the strategy should be to vaccinate patients or figure out ways to jumpstart an immune response against these different sort of aspects or antigens. So that's where uh, a group of several investigators uh, around the world are looking at different kinds of vaccine studies or looking at ways that you can infuse something that will directly have an anti-cancer effect that uses an immunologic approach but actually infuse either a cell or an antibody that attacks the tumor. Another group of investigators uh, in pancreatic cancer think that, no, the, the big issue is the microenvironment of the tumor. There are all these fibroblasts that are putting up a blockade that prevent the uh, T cells that are present in pancreatic pan cancer patients and are, uh, but aren't able to get through the blockade. There are also other types of cells like the regulatory T cell or the, or the suppressive <coughs> macrophages, which will downregulate the immune response. So therefore, there are different kinds of approaches that are being developed to try to uh, treat patients with cancer. 
And in terms of the, uh, these targets that go after pancreatic cancer, there are, uh, mesothelin is a very popular target right now. Uh, there are some uh, muck proteins. Occasionally, uh, universal tumor antigens are being studied like Survivin or, or uh, telomerase. But in any case, there are several different targets that can be imagined for the treatment of pancreatic cancer. And uh, the, one of the, the targets that you'll see when you look on uh, the clinicaltrials.gov, you can see that there are studies looking at mesothelin. There are also studies that try to uh, load dendritic cells, those uh, qu uh, quarterbacks of the immune system, with cancer antigens. And then there are also other stra uh, strategies using uh, patients' own tumor cells uh, or uh, other p uh, patients' pancreatic tumor cells to try to induce a, an immune response. So mesothelin has become a very popular uh, target uh, uh, that uh, patients with pancreatic cancer are uh, kind of on the front lines for developing these sorts of targets. So I thought it was useful to include this. One is that there have been some whole, tu whole tumor cell vaccines which uh, investigators think that the anti-cancer effect is that they've seen in those uh, uh, patients were because of a response against a molecule called Survivin. Mesothelin is expressed on uh, the majority of patients' cancers that have uh, pancreatic cancer. It's also expressed on uh, ovarian cancers and uh, mesothelial, mesothelioma cells. Mesothelin is expressed a little bit on normal peritoneal cells, which are the lining of the lungs or within the abdomen. But the hope is that an anti-mesothelin response will be able to recognize the tumor cells better than the normal cells. There are also, in addition to uh, GVAX, there are some other vaccines that are being studied uh, to target mesothelin. There are also uh, several what are uh, drugs called uh, antibody drug conjugates. This is where an antibody that can bind to mesothelin is coupled with a, uh, a chemotherapy drug. And the hope is that this will be able to target the tumor uh, with the, 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 the chemotherapy drug specifically by using the mesothelin uh, uh, target. And uh, our phase one group at Princess Margaret is going to be studying a mesothelin drug conjugate uh, in the next few months, I believe. There is also a strategy that's been uh, studied uh, beginning uh, treatments at the NCI and other groups that are trying to take the anti-cancer cells, the, the T cells, engineer them to uh, have a antibody targeting uh, complex so that it brings the anti-cancer T cell to the mesothelin target and therefore the tumor cell as a way to treat the patients. So this is where uh, the T cells are taken from the patient's blood and then engineered to target the tumor through that mechanism. And then finally, uh, there, are, uh, there is a group in Cambridge, England that's looking at uh, ways to try to allow the T cells to get through the blockade of the fibroblasts by uh, targeting ways that the fibroblasts are able to uh, inhibit the ability of, of the T cell to infiltrate. And then this is a cartoon that shows that uh, several of the uh, targets that are being looked at at ways to manipulate the ability of the microenvironment of the pancreatic cancer to prevent uh, infiltration. And one of those is uh, hedgehog inhibition, and another is notch pathway inhibition, both of which are drugs that are currently being studied in phase one studies. And also, there is a strategy where if you target the suppressive macrophages by activating a molecule called CD40, you can turn that suppressive macrophage into a, a quarterback-type cell, the uh, dendritic cell, or at least some aspect of that, in order to induce a more uh, important response. So in, in summary, uh, from the standpoint of pancreatic cancer, we're in the early days. There, uh, especially for uh, immune therapy of pancreatic cancer. Uh, immune checkpoint blockade has shown a lot of exciting results in patients with melanoma, 
lung cancer, we're seeing responses in, in gastric cancer, bladder cancer, many other types of cancers. And as I showed before, there is some glimmer of hope for pancreatic cancer. Uh, there's also the hope that maybe uh, cell therapy with tumor infiltrating lymphocytes or engineered T cells will be able to target tumors. And finally, that I think uh, right now a lot of doctors are poo-pooing vaccine therapy because it has been studied for so many years and there have been so few good responses in patients. However, as we are learning more about the immune system, it might be that you have to combine vaccines with these checkpoint inhibitors as a way to induce a response. And hopefully over the coming years, we'll be able to figure out ways to, uh, to combine strategies to induce a better uh, anti-cancer effect in all, all kinds of cancers, including pancreatic cancer.